action. <laughs> Slap. <laughs> I'm putting that in there. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ross Miller, and welcome to the Speedwell Garage, Parkton's friendliest Studebaker Packard workshop. <laughs> See this? You see how this shaft is so dark here? That means it has been very hot in the past. Uh, I'm pretty sure, as a matter of fact, I know this transmission has been rebuilt before because you almost never get virgins anymore. There's almost no such thing. Um, so I can also see that in the past, not only has this been hot, but it has leaked around the, where the stub shaft mounts to the housing and has thrown oil out in the past. Although right now it's not doing that now the owner's complaint with this car is that it was not such a bad shifting and acting transmission but it had the usual complaint of groaning into direct drive and also rather unusual with this transmission uh, changing the throttle pressure changing the throttle linkage had very little effect on how the transmission shifted so that tells me that there's something wrong have to discover what that is. But now we're just going to uh, take this torque converter apart and see what we find inside. Now this is a balanced unit. It was balanced at the factory all together. Um, here's some balance weights right here. It's factory welded on. So you want to be careful when you take it apart to put it back together the same way and that means marking the two halves. So one of the reasons I know that this car is not a virgin, is that somebody has already marked the two halves of the converter, just with a little scratch line there, and that's actually sufficient for what we need to do. Oh, one other thing I want to point out before we take it apart, there is inside the torque converter a one-way clutch that's on the other end of this shaft, and so if you twirl the shaft clockwise, it goes easy. If you go counterclockwise, it goes harder. That's how it should be. If it goes the same amount of difficulty in both directions, chances are your, um, your clutch is locked up and that will generate a fabulous amount of heat while the car is running. And then the front seal gives out and then you're left on the side of the road cursing your Caribbean. Later Ultramatics are sealed with an O-ring, earlier ones with a gasket. Um, as a question to ask, yeah. what's the difference between an O-ring and a gasket? Aren't O-rings you know, just gaskets, gaskets? The earlier cars just have a flat paper gasket. Uh, yeah, this is actually uh, superior and actually easier to install, but you can only use them one time because this used to be round, and if you look closely you can see it's now collapsed down to a triangle, so you can't put it back, otherwise you get to take the car apart again and put another gasket in. Uh, so, uh, yes, looking at this, this, uh, this converter seems to be in very nice shape. Oftentimes, if there have been problems, the veins will be broken up. Uh, these veins are in wonderful condition because uh, if anything comes loose inside of here, a bolt or something of that sort, well the oil's traveling at 400 miles an hour when you accelerate away from a stop. So it doesn't take much to really ruin something. Uh, the other detail I'll just point out because this is a patrician, uh, they offered two different torque converters in 1956. You see these veins are almost straight like the sections of a grapefruit. The, uh, the two-door hardtops in the Caribbean had veins set at an angle and that gave the, uh, the torque converter a little bit more performance off the line. In fact, they're really, it's quite noticeable if you have one, if you can get one. It's a very nice upgrade for any 56 Packard. All right, thank you. So. Still just observing here. 
anyway, this is all very nice and clean inside. Um, this is uh, the pump. This is the turbine. Uh, the reactor is down inside there. And you can see that one-way clutch action that I was telling you about. If, uh, if yours is jammed, take it out and throw it away. There's nothing else to be done with it. <laughs> so, however, we can at least pull the shaft out. Oh, this looks really nice. Okay, this is a very nice one. As you can see, there are only some very light lines on here where the sprags on the sprag clutch were engaging with this. So this is uh, in really good shape. Now this uh, thrust washer is in not such good shape. I don't know if you can see it, but there's quite a step here. I'm thinking that the transmission was probably put together with not quite enough end play. And there's a spec in the book, which we'll come to that later when we uh, go to set that up, but that's going to have to be addressed. Maybe we should talk a little bit about what torque converters work, because it's not immediately obvious to a lot of folks. Um, this portion of the housing, of course, is bolted to the engine, and it turns whenever the engine is turning. And this thing is full of fluid, completely full of fluid. And so what happens is that because of centrifugal force, the fluid gets sucked in here and blown out there at up to 400 miles an hour which is pretty impressive. <laughs> that fluid then shoots down into here and because this is angled, it pushes it. Okay. Yeah, does it make sense? Okay. So that would all be tremendously inefficient uh, because of all the turbulence. So what you have to do is you have to cause the fluid to realign itself to be ready to re-enter these veins again. And that was, this was a huge, huge step forward in the late 40s when this was uh, invented. Um, you get the smooth for, fluid flow and actually not only to transmit torque but actually to multiply torque. This is, uh, being a 56, I think the torque multiplication is something like 2.6 to 1, which was, I think, the highest in the industry. Um, yeah, there were reasons why Packard went that direction, which we're going to go into now. But uh, yeah, it was actually a very good torque converter. In the, uh, in the bottom half of the housing here is what's known as the direct drive clutch. Because uh, Packard's torque converter had such a high torque multiplication, it means also that at cruising speeds it would slip a lot. And nobody wants that. Buick had that and it drove people crazy because they <laughs> slipped so much. Slip and slide and whatever. Um, so Packard introduced, with their automatic transmission, a direct drive clutch that's packaged behind all the torque converter elements so that when you came up to cruising speed, um, the governor inside the transmission would, would tell it now, a piston would rise up and the clutch disc would be captured and you'd have a very efficient drive. So we're going to look at this clutch disc now, it's right behind this plate. Um, now supposedly... This would have been marked also, but I've seen no, oh, well they did it, look at that, here they are. Yeah, but they didn't, <laughs> they put more, oh yeah, they did put marks, okay. All right, I have to remember how that goes. It has been marked. Wow, okay, didn't know that happened. Oh, yeah. Oh, you missed it? Should we put it back? Well, no, I'm recording. I just okay. like, wow, I thought for some reason there was like one full one assembly thing. underneath. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is uh, the uh, reaction plate, which I'll talk about some more in just a minute. There's something very important to check about that. Uh, there are also, just to make everything even, there are four little spacers here. And right now I'm only seeing three, but the fourth one's probably here, that go on these posts where the other springs are not present. Anyway, it'll turn up in a minute. Definitely want those in the future. 
Now this is the, uh, the infamous direct drive clutch plate. This is the thing that makes all the noise <coughs> when the transmission gets old. And part of the problem is that, uh, uh, we could deal with the problem. <laughs> now, two problems. As the transmission ages, it doesn't get the fluid pressure it needs to operate properly. So then it starts to slip. And once it starts to slip, then it gets hot. And when it gets hot, it gets hard and glazed. Now I should be able to indent that with my fingernail. I can sort of, kind of, nope, can't even scratch it. Um, so that's why this transmission groans going into direct drive is because the clutch disc is too hard and the coefficient, coefficient of friction is not what it should be. <coughs> okay, now this, this odd looking spider device here is actually the, the piston that operates the high range clutch because <coughs> the, the disc is sandwiched between this and that. That's bolted on. And this little darling here actually, uh, when you put pressure behind it, rises up. Or at least should. Come on, baby. There we go. <laughs> it's groaning already. <laughs> Yeah, what a delightful sound. We live for this. Um, so th this part of the uh, assembly doesn't usually give much trouble, but I will point something out, though, because I've seen it many times, and in fact, when I was younger and dumber, I made the same mistake myself, is that um, this pressure plate here, it has to go in the right position. In fact, if it's not marked, I'm going to mark it here in a minute. <coughs> because it's possible to install this thing 25 degrees or whatever it is out, which would put it like that. And you say, oh, yeah, what difference does it make? Well, when the clutch releases, the pressure plate comes and hits this raised spot in the converter housing, and it'll break the tab right off. Wow. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I had direct drive for the first three shifts, and now it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, yes, put that right. Well, I think the horse is already out of the barn on this one. Uh, I could mark it. Where's that? Yeah, let me, let me mark him. Even though I don't think he's right, but we'll mark him anyway. He can continue to be as wrong as he was before. up in the drainer and let it drain down for a while. So how does marking it not affect the performance? Is it because it's so minute? How does what affect it? The marking. It doesn't affect the performance of a no, piston or anything balanced. at all? Okay. It was balanced as an assembly and because anything that you machine, even if you try really hard, is going to have heavy spots and light spots. When you spin it, it will shake. Ah. So they would assemble the entire unit together uh, and then assemble it, uh, then uh, balance it afterwards. Gotcha. So that's, that's why things that don't move relative to the housing need to stay in the same position relative to each other. Now I want to show you uh, a very important special trick that most people don't know about. Because <laughs> I only discovered it a little late in life. <coughs> and that is... This plate is not flat. It's not supposed to be flat. If it is flat, you got troubles. So this is the side that the clutch disc runs against. And because of tremendous pressure comes against it, they actually made it coned inwards towards the clutch. So then when the clutch engaged, it would go out flat, which made for a nice engagement and also made sure that they had full contact of the disc with the uh, with the pressure plate. So what you do is, oh, it's this is a honey. I don't know if you can see that, but it's high in the middle and it's about ten thousandths. Oh yeah, this is a really nice one. 
really nice. Yeah, in about ten thousandths um, coning. So that would be the factory spec. So this is this is a plus. It makes a beautiful sound. <laughs> Um, that's a really fine coning. That's really hard to detect unless you do what oh, you just did, you correct? Have to do that. But the problem is, you see, if, you're, if your pressure plate is already, if it's been really hot, because that's where all the trouble always starts, if it's been really hot, the cone goes backwards. And then the harder you press, the less surface area you get. Ah. <laughs> it, it pushes it away. So even if everything else is nice, you still don't get a nice uh, direct drive clutch engagement because when this is fully loaded with the hydraulic pressure behind the clutch disc, it should be about flat. So if it's already inverted, when you put the, this, uh, the actual pressure on this plate is several thousand pounds. I could calculate it in my spare time, but it's several thousand pounds. And if it's already backwards, it's just going to move away from the clutch disc like a, the bottom of a Dixie cup, and you're done. So what symptoms are there when you know that's happening? Uh, the symptoms you'll get uh, will be the same, it's the same old symptoms clutch will groan, it won't hold going up a hill, or if you're going up a hill, it'll try and shift into direct and just go Because even on a fairly heavy car, if the direct drive clutch is right, it should go into direct, and an awful lot of them don't. All right, perfect. Official sounds by Ross Miller. Official sounds. <laughs> we, have, we have a lot of that here. We'll have Yara and start doing those soon. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, let's see what else we want to say about this. So, uh, all right, I'm going to have to send and get a, uh, a different high range clutch that has been relined. That used to be easy, but now with EPA regulations and everything else, it's hard to find someone to do them. <laughs> That's a bit of a headache. Uh, but I got to have one because I can't put it back together with this thing in here. It's, yeah, you can, you can feel it. It's, it's as hard as the steel table. Ouch. So, and that's what you're talking about, really, about the glazing and the, the glazing, hardening. Yeah, because of, the, of of physics alone with metal, when it gets hot and cold, it, it starts to hard and, um, harden. Car, well, this is like a, a, a very glorified cardboard, <laughs> highly glorified cardboard, and it just loses its resilience and uh, it's hard as a rock. All right, so I do have a firm that I can call. All right. Uh, the, uh, that's called the pump, this is called the turbine. We're going to take the turbine apart just basically to check a few things. Um, Packard very neatly made this so it can only go back one way. The bolt pattern is slightly shifted, so you can only bolt it on one way, so there's actually no need to mark it. Oh. Did you get it? Yeah, I got that. I was just a surprise. Okay. <laughs> Gandhi was wrong. Sometimes violence is the answer. So this is actually hit it. I thought it fell. I thought you were picking it up. And <laughs> I that, did. Yeah. I okay. picked it up and then smacked it so it would fall off. Okay. This is, uh, this is actually the <laughs> reactor here. Reminds me of my single life. Okay. And uh, this, this thrust washer is in beautiful shape. There's nothing wrong with him. And the, uh, actually the only real reason I wanted to get into this part, because I, I can tell already that the rest of it is good, is that uh, sometimes these bolts work loose. And so I always take it apart and retorque the bolts and usually put Loctite on them because um, you don't want them coming loose. It's really, yeah. really a bad scene. So and there's, underneath of this is another thrust washer and that actually is used to determine the end play within the housing. Mm. Okay, I think that's, well, I can, Modern torque converters are all welded up in one piece and they are completely unserviceable by the mechanic, but things were different in the 50s. I've been told, just out of generalities, the more moving parts you have to a piece of machinery, the more likely it is to break down. Mm -hmm. Generally okay. speaking, okay. that's why I don't own a BMW. 
put that in the I will keep it in there. <laughs> I mean, I love the Germans. I have a lot of German friends, but they are masters of needless complexity. It's like, oh, let's just, just another 26 parts and we'll get this little tiny feature to work. Because I have to take the long-term view with all this stuff and the fewer parts, the better. All right. All right. Um, I'm basically just going to let this stuff drain down and then clean it and then we'll start to put it back together. But I have to order a direct drive clutch. All right. So part two later. Yep. Perfect. Say hi, Aaron. Hi. <laughs>